Hello, welcome to Black Paint version 0.21. What's new in this version is I've added the icons for the brushes to the top so you know exactly what you're going to be getting when you press each of the corresponding F keys. And if you press the right arrow key, it will switch. So you just repress the function key to switch it. It will stay on the last brush that you had until you do so. And then right arrow key again to switch to the last set and then F1. And um, the order of these have no real relevance just yet. They will be a bit more organized later. Let's just make the brush a bit bigger. So F5. Uh, I'm also going to make it so that you can actually click here. I'm going to add that very shortly. Uh, but I did release this as an update. So F8, F9. These are still too small. F10, F11, F12. All right, so plenty of new brushes, plenty of brushes to use. Uh, everything that's tintable, anything that's white will get the best tint result. Okay, so F1 here, I choose two tones. It's gonna randomize between those two tones. F2, same deal, two tones that you choose, so control and click, alt and click. F3, uh, because there's already a lot of color information in here, if you go anything too dark, it will make it extra dark. And trying to tint with purples is a little bit more difficult because there's no real uh, blue content in this image All right so it ends up dark but you've got the full range of what grass would tend to be like browns yellows and greens f4 uh, this is a mix between if i just choose both on white you can hold down control and all at the same time and click and it will assign the color to both of them okay so this is kind of like pink and white, but if you tint this red, you get some nice tonal variation there, or blue and yellow, maybe really obvious yellow and obvious blue. You see, it doesn't matter too much what the stem looks like because it's getting like dark tints of green. So this kind of separates this from Photoshop in the sense that you can use full color sprites. Um, F4 is a poppy. It's going to be a little, sorry, F5 is this poppy. It's going to be a bit harder to tone that. So usually I go for some light tones or a couple of gray tones and you can kind of tint like that. It's quite nice variation. F6. Uh, so this is naturally green, so you can tint it towards red and towards blue okay so it's going to vary between these two tones and you'll get variations like that um if you want to keep it quite automy a couple of yellow tones uh, you really want to play with the spacing of these things as well okay f7 is grass here so we can tone that so if I keep one white, that's going to be exactly the same color as what's there and tint it towards this color will give me a little bit of tonal variation. There's already the variation of a number of sprites uh, logged in here. So there's like different kinds of sprites. So you're getting that already and that plus the color detail gives you something unique that um, Photoshop can't quite do. Maybe one day it will. So F8. Uh, I'm going to load green and some oranges in. 
nice variation there. If you want to keep it quite autumn just a couple of browns. Let's go really golden. And if you wanted these to lie flat, just do Control R to swap it like this. Hold down X, and you see you can kind of like rotate it. It's quite cool, right? All I'm doing is stretching it. And then you can change, yeah, the scatter's already up. A little bit of rotational range gives it a little of deviation. And you can do that. And if you do Control R twice, you can flip it the other way. Right, and then you can play with the spacing and all these things. Maybe grab a red tone and just put some of those in. A little autumn leaf pile. It's great. Okay, so F9 gives you these little, I don't know, little furry, furry, um, bushy sort of looking things. And yeah, you can choose two tones. Because this is white, it's going to do exactly what you say the two tones should be. So this is quite nice. F10 is kind of like an arty brush, very artistic style brush. So yeah, it will just do whatever two tones you give it. F11. Uh, let's go over here. This is just little stone shapes with a little bit of shadow on it. So that gray tone will just make these bits darker. Right, so I can choose a couple of tones. Also, if you press the uh, the comma or full stop key you can switch through palettes I'm going to make a few more because this is a bit limited I found it doesn't quite have some of the hues that I need just yet so I'll make a few palette types uh, I'm also going to make it so you can load in your own brushes and palettes in the future but that's going to be a little bit later once I've got everything else fixed so I'm going to choose a couple of tones here and even pick what's already in there so you can get a mix between what's there so that's pretty cool uh, and f12 it's just a regular kind of scattery stone brush but it doesn't have any shadowing on it so it's good for little details there's 10 layers so if you press up you go right up to layer 9 layer 0 is the best layer to draw in because it works with the background for opacity a uh, bit of a weird thing to explain but uh, the other layers act a little bit different. So if you were to put a soft brush in here, for example, it kind of kind of replaces the opacity. It's a bit of a weird one. It's a bit like painting over wax crayons in a way. And it's one of the bugs that I'm trying to fix. I want to make it more like Photoshop style uh, painting. All right, so shortcut keys, opacity, hold down A up and down and it will uh, change the opacity or you can press one two three four five six seven eight or nine and you if you look up here as I do that the opacity sort of changes in these increments that kind of are really kind of low and really high now that's good if it's low and you hold down F you can really brighten areas up it's like an additive effect and you can create you know little highlight here and there, a little bit of bloom. Right, you can even paint with a brush like that, so F10 for this brush and F. And I can paint some little kind of highlight details. So F3, F, I'm holding down F, not just clicking it, but I'm holding it down. And it gives, it adds a little bit of texture as well. Now it will also land on the actual canvas, so you have to be careful with it. Okay, uh, so that was A. If you hold down S and move left and right, it decreases and increase, increases the brush based on where you pressed S. So if I press S here and move to the right, it's based on that initial location when you pressed it. Right, It's the only way I could get that to work at this point. Uh, M is mouse mode, it won't take into consideration pen pressure, but ninja brushing lets you increase the size based on speed. So if I go fast, it becomes a big brush, and if I go slow, it becomes a small brush. So that gives you pressure with the mouse, 
in a sense that if you go slow, fast. Right, you can decrease the spacing and use catch up if you want it to basically do what it's supposed to. You can see that effect. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Now I've run out of undos and what's happened is it's baked everything down to one layer. So the undo memory has a limitation and I kind of overdid it. There will be different um, ranges of this. I'll go right up to what 100,000 undos if you want it. I'll give you choices at the start what you want. Uh, what resolution do you want and all these things because a lot of it does depend. All right, so I'm going to clear the screen anyway so I can get my undos back and what else? Perspective mode is interesting. You press P to switch that on. It will, whoa. Okay, it plays a little bit with the size and that ninja brushing is way too high. Uh, let's do catch up, ninja brushing low. Let's do mouse mode off. Right, and as I go into the distance here, with perspective mode on, it naturally gets smaller. Okay, I'm just going to turn off the memory to stop it automatic bake. Right, so you can press O, it will turn the, mem the undo memory off, right, and it won't do automatic baking. So when you're painting, you want to start from the back because as you paint the foreground, it's going to overlap the back. But you see with perspective mode on, I get this natural sizing in the distance. Just be just be wary that you've got it switched on because it can get hard to remember that you actually had it on. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things you see is a paint over. That kind of thing happens. It doesn't matter how many layers I go up. I'm going up all the layers, but I could go down a layer and then paint behind certain bits, see like that, so up and down the layers, it's pretty nice. Um, perspective mode is nice for that, and I will give you control of where, like how small it gets, maybe some sort of, um, let me just draw it, maybe some sort of thing like this, oh look it already gets, <laughs> it's already doing it. Um, you see my opacity is a little bit weird. Like I was saying, the other layers do act a bit different until I fix that bug, and layer zero seems to be the best at holding its opacity together. So you'd get a gizmo like that where you could set, you could probably set this to be like more narrow, and then like wider, and then you could set this maybe sort of move it around or something, and that would then work out how big or small things need to need to be. Sorry about the washing machine in the background. <laughs> It's just for effect. It's better than music. No copyright infringement. Um, so what else? Rotational offset. If you hold down R, so noisy, and uh, you move around, it will give you a little rotational offset like that. All right. So as you go left. Or as you go right. It acts a bit weird sometimes, so yeah. The other option is to use this. Right, the little slider, and you can see it happening there. And if you want perfect 90 degrees, just do control R. If you want it to follow, do shift R and it will attempt to follow the brush. Brush is too big, I think. Mouse mode still on. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Let's get that James Bond thing happening. Uh, so spacing. You know, with the feathers. Oh, there's an idea. I've not added feathers yet. I like this a lot. All right, you can't really do that with Photoshop with all these different variations and then F7, switch a brush. Uh, in fact, I should do that again. Yeah. All right. Um, 
rarity spacing, yeah, that's this one, so you can see it changes that value. Undo memory is whether to use undos or not, so you press O, it's going to start remembering undos. Yeah, so every stroke, it will remember every stroke from press until let go. You can use the bracket keys to step up and down the size. You can imagine this would be pretty good for making fur once I get some fur brushes, but you can use what's there as well. Um, I'm going to press undo. Okay. And if I press enter, it cycles through the undo memory. So you can sort of see what you did as long as you've not used up all the memory. Uh, press B is the same as when it runs out of memory, it bakes everything down into this kind of flat. It's like it picks everything down into layer zero, it's like a merge down and it's automatic if you exceed the memory. So just be wary of that. It usually goes red as you get to the end, so if I scribble loads You see, pretty nice for fur. Um, see, so it goes orange, it's close to the memory limit. And then I get quite close to 10,000. Press enter. You see, it's going to draw everything that I've done. It's quite nice to watch. And as I get to the end, it freezes and then bakes everything down, resets the memory. So you've got your undoes back, but only from, uh, only from that point. See that? Okay, so I think that's all of those. There's a whole lot of other things. Um, hide the UI with H. You can hold down, if you've hid the UI, you can hold down tab so you can see the palette at least. And you can still pick colors, but you have to hold down tab. And it gives you access to your the brush settings. So you can kind of work without all the garbage UI. Um, Obviously we've got, oh, Alt-R, add reference, brings up this little reference plane. If you press L, you can load in an image. Let's see, so there's one that I used earlier for reference. Okay, so you can put this wherever you want it. Right click, uh, middle mouse or scroll wheel. So middle mouse will reset the size of it to its actual size. Scroll wheel will resize it. Right mouse will move it and shift and mouse wheel will fade it out. So you can use it to trace over. You can't pick colors from it. Um, so, but if you can load in a palette, then that's fine. Um, so there's that. So Alt R will get rid of it. And that's your brushes, that's your layers, additive, clear canvas. So Shift C to clear. Control C clears with a low color, and Alt C clears with the high color. Uh, bake. Okay, so once you bake something, once you bake your image, so bake. This catch up needs to be higher. So catch up slows the mouse down. Bake. It's awesome. Um, and you press B. Okay, it saves it for you, but it saves it to your app data folder. Let's see. Percent app data percent is what you type in. Then the version of Blip Paint that you're using, and it'll be there. 
it will try and give you a, a one where it's removed the background as much as possible, but it's it's prone to not working correctly right now until I fix that. Uh, there's a screen capture plus the same sprite with the background not removed. So you can bring these into Photoshop and do more work on them. So that's it for this version and I hope you enjoy using Blip Paint. It's created in Game Maker Studio 2. Pretty awesome uh, game engine for pixel based 2D games and also very powerful for a lot of things. It's given me some degree of Wacom support apart from it not uh, working correctly when I've got my other monitor on. It seems to always spread between two monitors. So that is a bug and I can't fix that yet. I've been speaking to the dev and he's looking into it but not really promising anything. Um, uh, there's a couple of other bugs that I can't think of at the top of my head. The opacity bug which I'm working on should hopefully get there with that and uh, everything else is is good so I hope you enjoy using this version feel free to share it around and uh, soon I'll have a discord up for it so thanks for watching bye